Bon après-midi, mesdames et messieurs. Buenas tardes, señoras y señores. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to ICAO's 13th Air Navigation Conference. My name is sung Kim, and I'll be your host for this event. Um, I'd like to welcome you to ICAO Sky Talks. Uh, for those who are here, congratulations for seeing this live. For others, should you uh, wish to see our full list of Sky Talks, please go to YouTube and type in ICAO Sky Talks and you'll see the list of 29 presentations we have for you. I'd like to thank all of the panelists, the, the pr uh, professionals in uh, the private industry, as well as the, the people that work here at ICAO for, to share their knowledge uh, firsthand with you. Um, I'd like to also welcome you to Montreal and uh, that you come here and enjoy some of the local uh, food and hospitality, uh, that you make more business contacts and that you ha have a great time and that you increase uh, your knowledge and your wisdom thanks to these sessions. Now this is day one, session one. Um, let me first int introduce you to someone with a plus 15 year career at uh, Air Canada, IATA, and ICAO, which gives him a very interesting perspective in that he understands not only the practical and functional aspect of what he's going to talk about today, but also um, understands the, the marketing and the legislature be behind it. He is our guru responsible for all of ICAO's activities in the field of cabin safety and will, oh, and will present the topic of GAS, which is the Global Aviation Safety Plan. Without further ado, please welcome ICAO Safety and Efficiency Officer, Mr. Martin Mourinho. Thank you and uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this session of Stag Talks dedicated to the 2020-2022 edition of the Global Aviation Safety Plan. So what is the Global Aviation Safety Plan? It is our ICAO document which houses the global strategy for how to improve safety, how to reduce fatalities and address the risk of fatalities related to high risk categories of accidents. It's really the framework by which uh, we develop national aviation safety plans and also regional aviation safety plans that will address issues and challenges at the state level and at the regional level. And because we have this three-tier approach where we have a global strategy that is translated into uh, regional plans and at the state level into a national plan, it promotes harmonization of all the initiatives uh, to improve safety worldwide, uh, coordinates efforts because we work uh, through the GASP not only with states but with regional entities like the regional aviation safety groups and the regional safety oversight organizations, and also with industry, including international organizations such as IATA and ACI that are also involved. And by doing so, we uh, eliminate the duplication of efforts and better coordinate the use of resources for global planning. So how do we develop the GASP? It's not simply a document that's done here in house. It has a very comprehensive process that takes into account inputs from subject matter experts and different stakeholders. It begins with two core groups here at ICAO, one which is the GASP study group that I'll talk to you a bit more uh, later, and it's our group of experts, which is dedicated to updating the GASP, and also our Air Navigation Commission, our group of experts here at ICAO, which create an ad hoc working group to oversee the development of the GASP. So those two entities create a first draft of the document uh, with proposals for, ga uh, for goals and targets, and then that goes out uh, to a consultation process. Last year here in Montreal, we held the Safety and Air Navigation Implementation Symposium, which was a chance for industry primarily to come to ICAO and give us their, their feedback on the work we're doing. We used this forum as an opportunity to present a draft of the GASP, including the goals and targets, and to get their feedback on how we're doing. So we got thumbs up from that symposium that we were on the right track with the proposals for the update of the 2020-2022 edition. And then from there, it went out to state consultation. So in preparation for the Air Navigation Conference that is being held this week here in Montreal, we sent out a draft as part of a working paper from ICAO uh, to all states and international organizations. And we also included in there a questionnaire where states and international organizations can give us their feedback on the positive aspects of the GASP, 
what are their challenges, things they like to see more of, how can ICAO better support its implementation. And we're gonna take all that feedback into account. We come to this week's conference where the GASP is being presented and will be discussed by the participants here. And we hope that through their feedback, we'll be able to then create uh, revisions in preparation for uh, the Air Navigation Commission to review a final draft of the GASP, which will happen in the spring of next year. Once the Air Navigation Commission is satisfied with the content, having taken into account the inputs from the conference and from others, it will recommend to Council that the GASP is approved. And if the Council approves, we will then do another round of state consultations in the form of a, an assembly working paper, where we again, we will present the whole GASP out to, to the world and get their feedback uh, in view of endorsing the GASP at the next assembly next year. So I've mentioned the GASP study group. This is a joint industry regulatory group that we created here at ICAO to get input from states, from international organizations, and from all the different regions in terms of how to best improve the GASP and provide its direction. So it's a wide membership. You can see uh, on the slide, uh, the states are represented as well as the international organizations that are there. Uh, the group works tirelessly. They work through the last year having four live meetings and monthly teleconferences to develop this content. And we work through a process of consensus. So the goals, the targets, everything that's been agreed to in the GAS has been done through a consensus with all these subject matter experts. So the group, when they were looking at revising the GAS, came up with some basic principles that would guide the development of the 2020-2022 edition of the GAS. One of the things the group agreed to early on is that there was a very clear need to have a vision for the plan. Where do we want to go with a global plan on safety? What is its mission? and what are the values that we need to include in there to enable effective implementation of the plan and affect changes in safety. There is also an agreement that we need to restructure the GASP into different parts, primarily because we speak to different audiences at a state level. So we needed to provide high level messaging to director generals, to ministers of transport, to communicate to them the importance of the plan, of having a strategic plan at the state level and of investing in safety. But we also need to give practical guidance to inspectors and to technical personnel that will actually implement the GASP. So you'll see that in the next edition, there'll be an executive summary, which is aimed really at high level personnel. And then there'll be two parts, which are technical parts on how to develop plans and how to implement them. We also needed to clearly define the responsibilities within the GASP. So the plan speaks to different entities. We speak to individual states. We speak to what we call the regions, which are really the regional aviation safety groups, regional safety oversight organizations, or other entities at the regional level. And we also speak to industry, including international organizations. So we really needed to clearly explain the GASP, what is the expectation at a state level when they see the GASP, at the regional level, particularly with the RASCs, and also industry's part in improving safety. So that will be clearly defined. We also followed the structure of the UN Sustainable Development Goals in the 2030 Agenda and created an aspirational goal and then used the UN terminology of having goals, targets and indicators, which I'll show you a bit of in a minute. We also agreed that we had to take a risk-based approach to how we do the plan. States are different. They have different concerns, different operational contexts, different aviation industries. So we can't create a one size fits all solution. We needed to provide an approach that's flexible so that states can address their risks. And we looked at this particularly through the high risk categories of occurrences. So what are the types of accidents that are of global concern and what are the types of accidents that should be looked at at a regional and national level? And we had gotten a lot of good feedback on the roadmap, which was included in the 2017 edition. And the group agreed that we needed to make the roadmap more predominant within the GASP. And in fact, we've actually expanded the roadmap to include operational safety risks and provide guidance for states, regions, and industry on how to tackle certain types of accidents. So our aspirational goal in the GASP is to achieve and maintain zero fatalities by 2030. We say it's an aspirational goal because, of course, there'll always be accidents, sadly, we'll never perhaps really get to zero, but it is what we strive for in safety. So everything we do 
is to ensure people travel safely and that there are no fatalities, and we want to reinforce that message. And in fact, there are states and some regions that have gone years without accidents, so it is possible, and it's what we are always driving for in safety. Our vision in the GASP is to achieve and maintain the goal of zero fatalities as defined in our aspirational goal in commercial operations by 2030 and beyond. So we link the vision to our aspirational goal. The mission of the plan is to continually enhance international aviation safety performance by providing a collaborative framework for states, for regions, and for industry, which are really our three target audiences. In terms of values, there are many which we felt were needed in order to enable the changes and improvements in safety. And I won't list them all because there's quite a few, but just to give you a bit of an idea that includes promoting a positive safety culture, promoting a sharing and exchange of safety information, taking data-driven decisions, and prioritizing actions to a risk-based approach, particularly with the implementation of state safety programs and safety management systems. So in terms of the structure of the goals, targets, and indicators, as I mentioned, we have our aspirational goal, which is of zero fatalities. And from there, we have a series of goals, some which we call organizational goals because they address organizational challenges, and some which are operational because they address operational safety risks. In the organizational roles, we look at two specific types of targets. There are targets that address improving the effective safety oversight at the state level, and there are those that have to do with uh, the application of uh, ICAO safety management provisions, particularly state safety programs and safety management systems. With regards to the operational safety risk goals, we look at targets that look at specific types of accidents, like runaway excursions. And because we know accidents don't happen very often, we also want to look at the precursors. So what are the safety risks? So we might not have mid-air collisions, but we can have a lot of air proxies or level bus. So we have to address those kinds of risks. So we have targets for that as well. And from there, there's a series of indicators specific to the different targets, which are used to measure whether or not the targets are being hit and the goals are being achieved. So this is the six proposed goals for the 2020, 2022 edition of the GASP. The first is to continuously uh, reduce uh, uh, operational safety risks. The second is to strengthen state safety oversight capabilities, and that is through the implementation of the eight critical elements of a safety oversight system. The third is to implement effective state safety programs, and that is to comply with all IQO provisions in Annex 19. The fourth is to increase collaboration at the regional level. Now, this ties in very much with the role of the regional aviation safety groups, regional safety oversight organizations, and also the global uh, aviation safety oversight systems, GASOS. We have a fifth goal, which is really aimed at industry, and that is the expansion of the use of industry programs that benefit improvement in safety, programs like the IATA Operational Safety Audit or the ACI uh, uh, APEX program, uh, and we encourage industry to take part in these programs. And the sixth is a tie-in with the Global Air Navigation Plan, which is to ensure the appropriate infrastructure is there for safe operations. And that is mostly based on the concept of the basic building blocks that are presented in the next edition of the GAMP. So in terms of high-risk categories of accidents, the GAS defines different types of accidents that either can cause a lot of fatalities or carry with them the risk of fatalities. And there are five that the group has determined should be addressed at the global level, but also at the regional and national level. And those are runaway excursions, loss of control in flight, controlled flight into terrain, runway incursions, and mid-air collisions. So regardless of the region, what the GASP is saying is that at the RAS level and at the national level, there should be programs to monitor or act to address all these high-risk categories because they have either led to multiple fatalities in the past or they carry with them the risk of producing accidents where there be multiple fatalities, so they should be addressed. So what are the next steps now with the GASP? As I mentioned, there is a draft version of the GASP, which is now available on the ICAO public website as part of the Air Navigation Conference working papers. The Air Navigation Commission did its preliminary review of the GASP earlier this year. There are discussions going on this week here at the Air Navigation Conference, and we will be getting 
feedback from states and international organizations on ways to improve the draft. We also issued a questionnaire, as I mentioned, and got a lot of good feedback, over 70 replies uh, regarding challenges, suggestions, improvements, and very positive feedback so far for the draft document. We are also rolling out workshops, particularly during the RASC meetings, to help states implement uh, the GASP and also to help them understand what are the changes that are coming in the pipeline and what they should be expected to do. And we will present the GASP at the 40th Assembly uh, next year for endorsement, and it will then be live for 2020. If you have any feedback on the GASP, you can always email us at gasp at ico.int, and we'll be very happy to answer questions and take feedback. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you.